All right, everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to part two of this five-part interview series. So first of all, for those of you that reached out that offered some wonderful feedback or YouTube comments or Facebook comments or dove into the first lesson, thank you very much. The feedback was just incredible. So full steam ahead, let's get right after it here. In this segment with Arlen, we started going really, really deep into the working with investors, and we took the time to really dive into, primarily into the qualification. How do you have that conversation with potential investment partners? How do you ask them the killer questions? Now, when you will go through this, you'll just see a couple things. Arlen is just a straightforward kind of guy. He's just a real person. And you know, when you're talking about multiple hundreds of properties, well over 600 transactions he's done and raised multiple, multiple millions and millions of dollars within capital here as well, you believe you can do it. Just by watching Arlen do this and just say, you know what, holy moly, I can have those conversations. It's not as scary as people think. So that's the biggest thing you'll get from this segment is number one is that you can do it. Okay, number two, it's not as scary as you think. And number three, it's just a straightforward conversation about how you can help and deliver, deliver value to your investment partners. So hope you enjoy this uh, part two of this segment. Remember, there is five of them. If you haven't watched the first one, jump and watch the first one and make sure you jump in and watch all of them in a series because this is an incredible masterclass. Honest to goodness, guys, you're getting the look inside of a head of a genius and I'm so excited to bring you this next segment. Enjoy. All right, so we're back here with uh, Arlen Dolan, Arlen Dolan, and uh, we're at his beautiful, it's Bar 7 Ranch, isn't yep. it? Bar 7, did you, what's the, is there any symbolism to that name, or is it just a cool name? Not really, how that came about is I bought the place, it was only two years old, yeah. and it has a big metal gate, electric gate at the front, and it's worth about 20 grand, yeah. and it said Bar 7 Ranch, and I'm going, ain't changing it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the names come from some inspiration, right? Yeah. And I don't want to spend 20 grand to get a new gate. Exactly. 20 grand to get rid of it, another 20 for another one. So that's how the name came about. <laughs> Bar 7 it is. Now, if I could have my own name, I always thought what it would be. It would be Lazy D Ratch. D yeah. for my last name, Dolan. Yeah. But uh, it's, I don't, for 20 grand, I don't need to change it. Yeah, Bar 7's cool. Yeah, Bar 7's Bar good. Bar 7 is really cool. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, we're, so we're having a, just a wonderful conversation here. Just once again, thank you for opening up uh, and coming out here and and uh, I, I'm a firm believer in our environment shapes a, a lot of things right like, I bet you've had some unbelievable um, conversations with people here or some unbelievable thought and some clarity is around some thought and direction and, and things like that in, a, in a, a beautiful environment like this yeah I do a lot of I, I do a fair amount of meetings here because it just it's just relaxing for everybody it's yeah. not a, that's not that corporate thing it's not yeah. the, the formal thing you just kick back and relax yeah now, this next part we're going to talk about. Now, I'm going to tell you one thing. Um, remember your REBA, the yeah. Real Estate Business Accelerator? Yeah. I still use it. So do I, day, actually. <laughs> to this day. And, and what is that? 17 years? Almost coming on 18 years. It's probably 16 years. When, when it would have been early 2003, maybe, or four or something, you did that. Didn't yeah, you? it was like, yeah, right around there. So for, some, for many of you... Um, that are watching this, uh, Arlen created uh, this thing called the Real Estate Business Accelerator, and it was uh, essentially it was a series of spreadsheets with tabs and you know things like that, and you just kept track of all the pertinent details and your portfolio analysis and all that kind of stuff was in there. Uh, you know, I actually it's been modified a few times. I actually I think Rain Real Estate Investment Network took my the spreadsheet i kind of did and they built their portfolio analyzer in the back end on that kind of a framework right so so if any of you are rain members if you're watching it and if you are using the portfolio analyzer arlen is the originator of that i guess we should uh, did you ever trademark it or was there ever no no so, so he's the guy to thank for for a lot of that in there but and you had that that portfolio, that that black uh, briefcase thing. Do you still have that one? You know what? If yeah. you walk out the door of my yeah. shop, open the door to my vehicle, yeah. it'll be sitting right on top of the passenger seat right now. Is that the original? Pretty much. It's slight edits, but it's okay. original. Yeah. I, I, we've got to take a picture of that. That is that is <laughs> that is like legendary. On and how many millions of dollars do you think you have closed by with that thing? And we'll walk through how you do your yeah. presentation. And it's old school. Right? It's we're, old school, we're, yeah. we're kicking it old school here. How many millions of dollars have you feel you've kind of raised by with that? 
Oh gosh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> a number, I guess. I yeah. don't know. Well, in general, how much how much capital have you raised, ballpark? You know, I don't I I don't really know that number because in my head I always looked at value of real estate, not how much money it took to do it. Right, okay. So um gosh, I don't know. It'd be multiple seven figures, but I don't yeah. have no idea what the number is. Well, and, I, and the only reason I ask is is because I'm actually adding up th through this interview series. I'm kind of adding it all up. It's now it's north of a hundred million right. in capital that everybody that I'm interviewing has raised. I'm going to interview a guy that's probably going to double that in one swoop. Holy! But I, I'm calling it so far. I've, I've, I started. Well, let's call it the hundred million dollar club. And right. Now it's going to be it's okay. Well, let's call it the half a billion club. And my, let's, let's see how let's see how high we can get it. So. All right, so your pre I guess I have to say, your it's not a presentation. No. It's a conversation right. and it's providing a solution. So you've met somebody. So let's back up. How do you meet somebody and where do you meet them and then how do you qualify them? Because you qualify them before you'll ever sit down and have a coffee with them, will you not? Yeah, I'll, you know, it's in passing conversations, like again, when I'm helping people and yeah. stuff, I learn a little bit yeah. I learn, and you get a good feel of where, you, I mean, I get a good feel of roughly where they're at. Yeah. Sometimes they surprise me, usually to the plus, to the good side as opposed yeah. to the minus side. And then uh, when we sit down, if it starts to make, if I can get a feeling that real estate would be something that would make sense for them, then I, I don't have a fear of asking pretty straightforward questions. Yeah. How much access to ca how much cash do you have yep. um, how much cash can you access in what timeline yep. how much are you willing to invest in real estate today uh, like I don't have a question right? like I don't have a issue asking those questions yep. they're, they're, they're good questions and it, uh, I'm looking for um, uh, feedback what they say back and I'm looking for body language yeah I'm not asking somebody to do something that they don't want to do I'm right. not asking something to do something that's not a fit for them but I but it's like let's just get the answer. Yeah. So you know, both, and I imagine they appreciate that as well because you're, you're. Let's see how we can help you. If we can't help you, let's, let's. I'm gonna maybe give you three or four things you can do, and if you're interested, we'll talk down the road. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think sometimes I, people are a little surprised at the forwardness because yeah. you know everybody gets this touchy feely thing saying it's, it's like not quite right to ask somebody about what kind of money they got. Mm -hmm. But you need to ask it. Yeah. So just ask it then, yeah. right? Just ask how can, it. How can I help you if I don't know what we have to work right. with? I've never had it happen. But they, they, someone could just look and go, oh, I'm not telling you. I've, yeah. I've never, actually never had it happen. Well, it's funny. The most things people fear will probably never, ever come to. And quite frankly, if someone ever did say that, well, how, how am I to help you if I don't know what we have to work with? Exactly. Or, or I often say, is, okay, well, why don't we start with a million? Is that fine? Well, I don't have that. Okay, well, how much you got? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, right. So you've, you've qualified them. Uh, you've met them. Maybe you've met them at a networking event. You, you also said something, too, is when somebody tells you how much money they have available, and let's just say for rough numbers, 100 grand. That's right. usually the number that right. in today's day and age, that's what comes out. Right. Um, you have a saying is they have more than that 100 grand. <laughs> You know, they always have way more. Yeah. I never knew that when I first started. Yeah. I remember, I remember one partner. There, you know, they were going to do five or something. It was with me, mm -hmm. and then we did the five, and then within three years later, they had twenty-five with me. <laughs> okay. But I think in their mind, when they told me the number to begin with, that was the number. That's what they were willing to put up before, no, until they trusted. No, me. I think yeah. what it was is that's actually what they had. Oh, okay. The difference was is is. You know, once they did the five with me, I didn't stop communicating. Okay, got their money, bought their houses, goodbye. You know, yeah. I didn't do that. I always kept following up. When I got good real estate information and what the market is, I always passed it along. And then I always, you know, verbally or sometimes different ways, I would say where things are at. And I think they just got excited and they started accessing, like say like my parents, mm -hmm. capital other other ways where it wasn't in their mind. So maybe I didn't ask what they did. My mm -hmm. assumption is they, they might have cashed out RSPs. They might have done a refi or a line of credit on their house, they found money. Yeah. So my belief is when they told me for the most part what they had available, probably 75% of the time was the, was the real number. Then mm -hmm. over the years, they, they got how things were going, they got motivated to find more money to give me more money. Wow. It, that makes sense, right? Yeah, absolutely. If someone asked me today, how much money do you got? I'm gonna open your wallet or check your bank account. That's what you got, <laughs> yeah, that's right? right? But, but, but if there was something that was just phenomenal, you, most people have the ability to find more resources within yeah. 
what they got, right? Yeah, you always find the resources of things that you want to do. Like, just ask any car dealership. Exactly. You don't, you don't need a new car, but you somehow find the thing, money that you want. Now, if people only took the same attitude with investments right. and making money, it would be a different, we'd have a different society. Like, I, like the first hundred properties I bought, not one partner was someone you'd call wealthy. Mm. Not one. Hmm. Years later, I started working with people that, that do have seven-figure net worths. Yeah. But all these people, you would have never thought they could do what they could do. And I don't think right. they thought they could do what they could do. But yeah. they ended up with follow-up and providing information, mm -hmm. on, market information, yeah. I mean, on an ongoing basis. Um, it... it they found it. Yeah, and you're not an economist or any of that kind of stuff. You just, you know, you just take resources that you were provided to you, summarized resources Correct. and articles, and, and you just distilled it back to them. Correct. Which they might not be informed of that. And that's exactly and it. And that was before the day of Twitters and the Facebooks and all that. Right. Kind of, you, you were almost like Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> you were providing, here's the article. Here's, well, it was way harder. Here's, <laughs> I, I think, I honestly think that there's with all this technology that's going on, there's actually a need to get back old school and meet with people in the, in the connection. Again. You know what? You're, you're yeah. so right. And that's something that I've always done. Yeah. Um, I don't, I won't send out a card without a personalized handwritten yeah. thing on. I'll be honest with you. I get Christmas cards from lots of people and organizations. If it's a photocopied or a photocopied yeah. names on it, it goes straight in the trash. It means yeah. nothing to me. It's yeah. everything is about personal. Yeah. Same with if you're doing a gift for somebody, make it, if you, here's yeah. a gift certificate for a restaurant. I go, there's no thought in that. Yeah. Do things with thought. Yeah, don't don't send a text or, you know, it's, it's expedient, it's easy. Pick up the phone. Yeah. And talk to somebody, or get better yet, get out if you can. If you can, by all means, go meet them, right? I think I think there's coming a time here, and I'm sorry for the commentary of our society. There's actually going to be a time that people that will do that work will actually get rewarded by doing the personal connections. You know, and that's. I mean, I still do it to this day. Mm -hmm. I'll see articles, and I could for, I could email forward it to them. Mm -hmm. I don't. I I take I print the thing. Yeah. And then I take a pink highlighter pen yeah. and I highlight the key things yeah. then I write a personal note usually a circle with a happy face yeah. and I put it in an envelope and I handwrite the envelope and I mail it yeah I mean <laughs> now if you went with efficiency yeah. forward yeah. I just did that in three seconds yeah. or I could do what just took me 15 minutes yeah but what that took me way longer, but what gets the result yeah. is what matters. Yes. Everybody's inbox just gets inundated. Yeah. Every, and, and some people are just going to be going, well, that's just not efficient. And they're going, well, you, you can resist. And some of the things that you resist and you're not willing to do will be the things that hold you back. But here's what I say is, why not try it? Right? There's nothing. So that's one of the reasons why I'm doing a lot of these interviews, kneecap to kneecap. And we could easily do this in front of a computer on yeah. Zoom. There's technology that can yeah. have that. But, but I think the level of, of depth of conversation that we can get into is so much better than alive. And you do have, you, I'm always turning the tables and you look at mm -hmm. other people's lives. And mm -hmm. they don't have to be executives or wealthy people. Everybody's busy these days. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets a gazillion emails yeah. and a gazillion texts these days. So if you want to stand out, you want to be sincere, I just believe in, I know when I get something handwritten or someone or a letter that's handwritten or a card that's handwritten, that means something. Everything else you're looking through, I got 62 messages in my inbox and some of them might be good, mm -hmm. but I don't have time today. So I just, you just go delete yeah. or you might leave it sit there Slight and go, slide. I'll, Arlen sent me that. I'll, I'll, I'll look at that when I have a chance. And mm -hmm. then it, then it gets eight days down the email list yep. then it's 30 days and then after a month the guys i got to clean my inbox and just boom, and yeah. it's all gone mm. right makes sense i hear you so to complete a conversation that we started earlier so um when you went outside of family you essentially parlayed the work and the deals that you've done with family and you use that as an example to then go out into a, a broader audience absolutely yeah. and, and 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 that you know the funny thing with uh, when I had family start too, it, that was a real benefit that I never thought of at the time, mm -hmm. because you know, there are, some people say, "Well, do you do you really think I should do this?" Mm -hmm. And I go, "Well, one, you have to decide." My number one line to them was always, um, mm -hmm. "If you're going to lose sleep at night over this, don't do it. Yeah. It's not worth it." But what I'd say to them, I go, "My family, my parents, my brothers, my sisters have all done it with me." Yeah. So there's not much more I can say to you about how I believe in it. If I have their money yeah. invested with me and it's my close family, I love them actually. Yeah. So, you know, and if, if I think it's good enough for them, obviously I think it's good enough for you. 
you have to decide yeah. whether whether it is or not. And, that, and the same thing was when when we we're negotiating. It was never really a negotiation, but our our split. Mm -hmm. My line was always the deal with you is gonna, is the same deal as I do with family. Yeah, yeah. I put I. I recommend this. I would put my own mother's money into it. As a matter of fact, I do. Yes. Right? Yeah. And, and then when somebody's going, and we're going to talk about this whole thing around splits. I remember you saying that very sincerely, and you do believe that, is I'm giving you the exact same offer that I give to family. Right. And that's a powerful, powerful, and I'm not going to use the word closing technique because it's not closing technique. No, it's, it's just not. true. It's true. Right. And, and, and I have the way I joint venture, and, and it's the same with everybody. I can't negotiate it. And the reason, I, I mean, I guess I can, but I choose not to mm -hmm. because I, I want everybody to be the same deal. Yeah. Like, I don't want some, someone talk here and go, oh, I got, you know, a higher percent from Arlen, mm -hmm. or someone got lower. That doesn't bode well. Yeah. It doesn't bode well for me at yeah. all. Yeah. So if, if it's good enough for family, it's good enough for someone else, and if that doesn't work for them, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 I uh, one of the reasons why I like the structure. I don't. I do a few different structures, very few. But I, I believe in a in a whole thing of uh, keeping it simple because I'm not a very complex guy. I want to only remember one or two structures. Exactly. And that's it because I want to not remember. Okay, this person's this jiggy and I've done this one with this, and this person's got a, this kind of a split, and I go, oh, geez, I can't even remember all this stuff now. I just yeah. want to say everybody, it's, it's, it's a system, it's a process, and there's a, a quote, uh, the old Bruce Lee quote is, I, what did he say? I probably butcher it, but I don't fear a man who can do 10,000 kicks. I fear a man who can do one kick and practice it 10,000 times. Yeah. <laughs> right? Makes, yeah, absolutely. So, so just keeping it simple is, is really the way you structure it. Okay. Absolutely. So... We're having our conversation over at Timmy's, and you have your uh, you have your Rebra binder, and you have in, maybe just before I, we dive into this, give an explanation of what's in it. Like, what is what is all in this? Well, basically, what I legendary binder. Well, basically, you know, when I when I put that together, I didn't put it together as a sales tool. Yeah. I put it together because I had a full time job. Yeah. And I needed information sometimes on the fly. Yeah. So I tried to figure out a summarized way to have all my property information. So in there, what I would have, I would have uh, uh, addendums to go with offer sheets if I was to do an offer. Yep. I have a property inspection sheet when you're going through a property. Then with the ones that I do have, I have like a cash flow, like it like could be one spreadsheet per company that yep. I have or per partner that would show you know, the rent, the mortgage payment, the condo fees, if there are any, blah, 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 and what the cash flow is. Mm -hmm. Then I'd have another sheet and say, these are the direct deposits that come out of all the other accounts. Then I'd have another sheet that, you know, say the, the tax roll numbers for all of them, another sheet that said the legal numbers for all of them, among other things. Yeah. So I would have that all so that if I got a call or I had to deal with something while at work or during a noon hour, I could just open up and have an answer and be done with it. Yeah. Then what happened, Honestly, not because I'm so sharp, but by default yeah. is is one person was asking me how I operate. So I opened it up and showed them and they seen the level of detail is what put their trust in me. Because yeah. they're going like, dang, that guy's, there's, there's hardly a question I could ask about something he owns that yeah. he can't answer right here. Yeah, He's you're like, a professional. Right. I go, it's, it's, yeah, the guy's dotting his eyes crossing his T's. He knows yeah. exactly what's going on. And I just was watching body language. I'm going... Dang, maybe I should show some other people this thing. <laughs> but you, it was actually a little bit out of frustration that you would sit there and go, yeah. well, look, and remember, this is what I do, and here's how I keep on track, because quite frankly, if you miss a mortgage, we know you know how much you have to pay for this, and boom, and, the, and then the person just going, okay, I, I'm yeah, in. <laughs> exactly. So it's funny, sometimes out of, uh, out of a frustration and, a, and a, uh, not a desperation, but just, you know, I just, look, buddy, this, you got to get involved with this, and yeah. here's why. Yeah. It just, it born from that. And then you just slowly just evolve that and then evolve that person. And you soften, I mean, you soften it to yeah. different people. Oh, and, totally. And Absolutely. Things like that. But yeah. uh, do you still do that to, to, to this day in, in certain respects? Yes, things? absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, people. Yeah, use what works. <laughs> well, yeah. And people want to see that you're on top of things. Mm -hmm. They want to see that you're organized. They want to see that, that you're a steward of their money. Yeah. And they want, so, so this sets them at ease because when I go through that, there's more in there than they would have thought of mm -hmm. is really what it comes down to. Yeah. So they're going, he's got more detail and more answers than, than I would have even had questions. 
So we're golden. Yeah. They feel comfortable. Yeah. So in, in essence, and I know you're not a financial planner. No. Because uh, it's definitely not. Fi- but you are, you in essence, are providing um, help for people and providing a, a financial, uh, not a service, but you're providing a, a return on their capital in, in different investments. And Correct. they want to make sure that they, they trust you more than the actual, they're not buying a house, they're buying you. Right? Well, absolutely. That's yeah. I've always said um, a good person can make a questionable deal or a bad deal mm-hmm. right with some time. Yeah. A, a not so good person or a very self-centered person can make a great deal bad. Mm-hmm. It's it's it still comes down to the person. Yeah. I mean, you talk about that with you could talk about that with businesses. You know, this restaurant is successful. This restaurant ends up not being successful. It's they're both restaurants. Right. So it comes down to the operator yeah. more than so in this world, whether it's you, me, or anything, it comes down more the operator of the real estate than the actual real estate. Wow. Right. Yeah, I never thought of it that way before. Right. So brilliant. So so really, the people are 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 trusting into you and. That's where, and you've said this quite often, is sometimes when people invest some money, they invest as a starting point until they trust you. And then lo and behold, they then will refer and they will also have additional resources and Mm -hmm. then more comes there. But they only trust you because you actually know what you're doing. Right. And what do you say to somebody who maybe is getting started and they don't have, you know, they don't have the, the all the properties and the track and people will go, well, that's easy for you to say, Arlen, you've got all these properties and you have all that. But maybe somebody just started, maybe they've only bought one place. How, how, would, how would I present that to somebody? Again, I mean, I started, my, I had my first rental property mm-hmm. with a JV before I even owned my own home. Right. So I didn't have a track yeah. record neither. <laughs> yeah. I had no track record. Again, I, I mean, disclosures, I, the first was with family, so I had the yep. track record of my credibility, of my integrity. Yeah. Um, but uh, outside of that, I mean, they're buying you. Mm-hmm. Like, you gotta not, you can't be selling real estate, you gotta be selling you. They're selling the trust in you. I mean, I used to say, I had a few lines that I always used, which are, is, again, it's not a sales pitch, it's the truth. And I would talk about, like, you know, when we're in this partnership, if, we don't make money, I don't get paid, mm-hmm. right? Like your RRSP guy or your mutual fund guy or something, if, if your stuff goes down 5% in the year, he says, we did great because everything went down 10 and, you, and I got it, so you only went down five and he pays, he gets paid still. Right. If my stuff goes down five, say if we sold right now, I'm writing checks. Yes. So, I, and I always tell people I'm, I'm a really nice guy, but I don't work for free. Yes. And I say, I'm more motivated to make money for you than you are. Because you're making money in your job and your work and your business anyways. And I go, I gotta make money here. So <laughs> I'm more motivated than well, you. This, this is the way you make your money. Exactly. Right? So I'm actually more motivated than you because if I don't make you money, I don't get paid. And I'm doing all this work day in, day out for nothing. Yeah. I'm nice. I'm not that nice. Yeah. Well, you know, just imagine you, know, you frame it as well. Let's say somebody has a job and they're going to job, and let's say if the business lost money, do you right. actually take your wage in half? Right. Right. You don't do that. No. Right? But you do. Yeah. If if there ain't no cash flow to be distributed, right. uh, For their share, you get nothing, and that, exactly. this is your income. Exactly. So I have more motivation, and I mean, that's simple. That's yeah. simple logic. People, you say that, they get it. Yeah. Right. So, so as you can tell, Ireland has no passion around this. So, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's that extra strong coffee. But, but, and here, and, and I'm a firm believer in, in where passion comes from. The passion comes from is just it, you have a belief in something. Yes. And and you are so strong in your belief and your conviction to do that. And even if something does go sideways, you're gonna you're still firm because. A lot of it comes back to home, right? right? You have three kids, and I hope the camera over there can get a, the beautiful shot of the, <laughs> the family over there as well. And you know, if something goes wrong and things like that, it's you know, it's this is the livelihood. This is groceries on the table for the kids, right? Right. So, so fantastic. So we're just getting rolling here. I'm just going to do another quick reset of the camera. And Arlen, as you can tell, Arlen's just getting warmed up. Yeah. Uh, we have a couple more segments. A couple more segments I want to dive into is. Um, Fully want to flesh out this conversation about your presentation, or, or, um, things that you say. I, I call them the magic words. Right. Even though that's, and you know what the magic words are? The truth. 
Well, that's, that's exact, the magic word. That's exactly right? it. Uh, and then after that, we're going to get into things, things like what would you, what are you doing today to raise capital? Because mm -hmm. things have changed an awful lot. Mm -hmm. And then also, I want to talk about some next, what's next for you, and then right. maybe a little bit of inspiration. Those are the kind of the topics. So, so we're going to just do a real quick reset on the cameras, and we'll be right back. So what did you think? Holy moly, wasn't that a great look? Now, I just love the way Arlen talks about his, you know, his three questions, the golden questions that he asks, or how he qualifies people, or how he just gets right to the point. Like most people just sit there and they dance around the subject and dance around it. Just get right to it. What's the prescription? How can you help somebody? And you know, find out what do they want, what kind of return they're looking for, when they're looking to invest their money. Why not just get the information you need in order to find out if you can help the person? Hope you enjoyed it. This this is just part two of five. In the next segment, what we're going to dive headfirst into is we're going to further refine Arlen's presentation. And you guys are going to be shocked at how simple, low tech, and old school his presentation style is. And then the next thing we're also going to do is dive into what I call how he handles objections. Or, you know, for a better term, it's actually investors' points of resistance. How do you overcome the points of resistance? Because an objection, honest to goodness, is means that the person still cares. The person still wants to keep Keep moving forward. Now, how do you handle that resistance that they have to keep them moving forward? That's what we're going to dive into the next one. So if you're enjoying this series, make sure you hit that like button, make sure you share it wherever you are, and make sure you subscribe to this channel because more videos like this are upcoming. I'm Russell Westcott. I help real estate investors start, grow, and scale the investment portfolio of your dreams. Bye for now.